Hello, I'd like to welcome you to our very exciting um, Sam Gambier Early Professionals Forum this morning. I'm Kathy Ferreira from Stanford University. And this in this forum, we uh, want to celebrate the accomplishments of Sam Gambier in molecular imaging and also um, both as a scientist and also as a mentor. So we've been um, conducting a series of webinars um, particularly um, highlighting some of his previous mentees and their mentees and talking about their contributions to the field of molecular imaging. So we're very excited to bring to you today a webinar from, um, from John Min and um, also from Sai Ryong uh, Kang, who are going to be telling us about bacterial imaging. Um, so just to give you a little bit of, a, of an overview, um, we're going to be talking about methods to be able to visualize bacteria in um, therapeutic settings. And um, Dr. Min is going to start us off with an overview of the field, and Dr. Kang is going to be giving us some, um, some specific examples of a couple of methods to image bacteria. So, very exciting, really groundbreaking work that um, is being conducted and we're really um, very um, excited by the opportunity to be able to share this today. So I'd like to provide an introduction also um, to Dr. Min. Um, he received his MD and PhD from, from Chanam uh, National University Medical School. Um, he also um, then completed his training in nuclear medicine at Chanam and um, Seoul National University Hospital. Um, he then um, moved to Los Angeles where he was a postdoctoral fellow with Dr. Gambier at the UCLA Crump Institute for Molecular Imaging. He then joined the Chanam National University faculty in 2004 and directs the laboratory of in vivo molecular imaging. He's also the director of the Institute for Molecular Imaging and Theragnostics. He is further the chair of nuclear medicine at Chanam National University Medical School and also vice president of research at Chanam National University. So very impressive set of, um, of responsibilities and um, involvement in the molecular imaging and academic world and um, so, Dr. Min, we really look forward to hearing your presentation. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for a great introduction, uh, Kathy. Uh, this is my uh, great honor to uh, speak, to talk about my work. Uh, particularly in this webinar uh, in memory of Sam. Uh, this is my uh, disclosure statement. Uh, I was a Sam's postdoc from 2001 to 2004 uh, at UCLA. Uh, actually, I was the first Korean postdoc of Sam. Uh, since I met him, uh, we have had a, a very close relationships and always interacted together. Uh, Sam was an extraordinary mentor to me, both in science and life. Uh, he always made time for me. He was a man who knew the magic to be brightening up a man's spirit. When I met Sam, I always felt as, as if I was the most important person to him regardless of my background, productivity, or title. He always raised me up. Before I joined the SAMS lab, I graduated from Jeonnam National University Medical School in Korea and completed military service and clinical training, such as internship, nuclear medicine residency, and fellow programs. I received PhD degree during my clinical training as the program offers the opportunity to combine clinical residency and or fellowship with research training uh, leading to a graduate degree. 
Research program coordinated with clinical training in Korea did not provide sufficient research experiences at that time. So I was not a fully trained researcher when I joined Sam's lab. But Sam was very patient and very supportive to the, uh, the researchers who begins his research careers. A Gambia lab at UCLA in 2001 was the place that opened my eyes in research, in particular in molecular imaging research. I was involved in many interesting projects at that time, such as uh, uh, some uh, HSV1 TK reporting uh, imaging studies using uh, different kinds of the reporter probes, FHBG and FIAU or some development of novel uh, molecular imaging for cancers using a phosphonium salt. I also involved in the uh, tri-fusion gene uh, construction project with uh, Dr. Pritha Ray and Abhijit De using synthetic ranula red fluorescent protein and truncated TK and also involved in the cardiac molecular imaging project with Dr. Joseph Wu and Ian Chen. All of these works provided me the insight in molecular imaging using optical and PET imaging. I learned lots of things from Sam. Those include the excellence necessary for a researcher, such as a, the lab skills, experimental skills, and scientific writing and speaking, the working together with many people, how to enjoy research works, how to organize research group, and so on. In particular, he showed me the extreme level of enthusiasm for research and life. And future vision that shined my brain and thrilled my heart. And he also showed me the true leadership that orchestrates huge group of research and grand research design. He was a real friend with a great hospitality. I cannot say any more about the friendship of Sam. I learned entrepreneurship from him 20 years ago that eventually led me to found CNQ Biotech. Most importantly, he always emphasized the importance of the family and advised me to take care of my family first before engaging in research. This photo was taken in February, 2004 when I just left, was about to leave Sam's lab to get back to my country. And Sam invited my family to his home at Portola Valley. And we held a, a mini concert, uh, this picture. And my, my daughter was playing cello and Sam and Sam's son, Milan was watching. And after her playing, Milan, uh, played piano, the theme of Phantom of Opera. That was the really happy time. As I got back to my medical school in Korea, one professor, Professor Hyun-il Choi at the Department of Microbiology proposed collaboration referring to this paper published by Chris Kantak Group in which Listeria monocytogens were imaged by bioluminescence imaging. They tracked the uh, migration of uh, virulent Listeria monocytogens in uh, living mice. He proposed to uh, image his different strains of Salmonella type murium that he developed for vaccine. So I decided to 
transform those strains of Salmonella type with bacterial luciferase. By the time I made the bioluminescent Salmonella, one paper I'd read while writing a review paper with Sam of this paper in gene therapy crossed my mind. The paper was this, Salmonella mediated protein delivery. That was published by Yuri Gelovani, Ron Blasper. So I tried to experimentally verify whether or not my bioluminescent salmonella can target the tumor grafted in mice. The result was like this. The bioluminescent bacteria specifically target the tumors in case of the E. coli and attenuated salmonella typhimurium. They target the tumor, not only the primary tumor, but also lymph node metastasis and lung metastasis and orthotopic tumors in brain and breast and clone. For molecular imaging scientists, nuclear medicine physician, this kind of result was very exciting to see the clear finding of tumor tropism. Moreover, the bacterial enumeration data revealed early clearance of bacteria from liver, spleen, lung, the normal organs, and continue to concentrate and proliferate in tumor tissue. So thereafter, I devoted myself to develop engineered salmonella strains for cancer therapy for more than 15 years. After Sam's death, I named my engineered bacteria Sam, salmonella-based, armed microbes. Sam's engineering was done in four ways. First, engineered strains were developed by genetic engineering for safety issue. And second, the gene expression modules in, that can encode several carbo drugs were engineered. The third, Many carbon molecules were employed and evaluated, such as a flagellin B and cytolysin A and asparaginase and, and so on. Along with all this work, great efforts were made on developing imaging assays for visualization of bacteria using bioluminescence and fluorescence and PET and photoacoustic imaging. This table demonstrates bacterial strains that has been employed for cancer therapeutic researches. Those are Bifidobacterium, Clostridium, E. coli, Listeria, Salmonella, and Streptococcus. In different category for preclinical application, the Salmonella has been overwhelmingly often studied. Several years ago, I designed gene expression system that induce gene expression by L-arabinose, which is the transcriptional inducer for PBAT promoter. To apply this system for cancer immunotherapy, flagellin B from Vibrio volificus, we call it FLA-B, was selected as a carbodrug, which is a strong toll-like receptor 5 agonist. So this salmonella expressing heterologous flagellin demonstrated excellent performance in tumor uh, regression in tumor bearing mice. And they could prolong the animal survival significantly. This bacteria suppress both primary tumor, as well as the metastasis in immunocompetent or immunocompromised animals. Immunotherapeutic role of bacteria expressing flagellin B, FLA-B, was 
mostly limited to the innate immune system, such as uh, macrophages or NK cells. We could verify flabby imaging, uh, flab flabby expressing the SAM could polarize M2 macrophages to M1, which was verified in immunofluorescence staining and fax analysis. What we learned from this study was that this approach using SAM expressing FLAV E strongly activated innate immunity, while the action on adaptive immune response was pretty weak. Uh, when I was enthusiastic in bacterial cancer therapy research, probably in 2008 or 2009, I met Sam and he asked me, why are you so working so hard with tumor targeting bacteria? I replied to him that this was the best thing I could do in my surrounding because we have excellent collaborators in microbiology and immunology in my medical school. Then Sam advised me that don't do the research that would not clinically would not be clinically translatable within five years. Uh, several years later, in 2018, Sam invited me to give a lecture at Munzer Auditorium at Beckman Center at Stanford, as you see in this photo. When Sam introduced me to the audience at this seminar, he confessed me. Uh, he confessed that he tried to discourage me when I committed myself to the research of bacterial cancer therapy. My group has explored to find a way to enhance adaptive immunity against cancer using SAM strategy. After many trials, we have found that the combined expression of cytolysin A, we call it CLI A, which is the pore forming protein expressed in Salmonella typhi. And FLAB e could maximize the anti cancer immune response. The CLI A play a major role in production, overproduction of tumor specific antigens, as well as the damage associated molecular patterns from the cancer cells that can strongly enhance anti-cancer immunity, particularly through the T cells. The FLAB E complement CLI A by strengthening innate immunity, mostly focused on the macrophages. So SAM expressing FLAB E and CLI A, we call it SAM FC and SAM expressing CLI-A and SAM expressing FLAV e only, we tested it, whether or not it produced the damp signal such as a HMGB1 high mobility group, box one protein and color reticulin translocation into the uh, outlet of the membrane and ATP release. And you, you can see the CLI-A or FLAV-E CLI-A expressing SAM significantly increase the, those damp signal, HMGB1 and carreticulin and ATP. CLI-A or flabby CLI-A expressing SAM also over express the tumor associated antigens. We know some tumor associated antigens of CT26 cells, ADLH18A1 and MTCH1 and E2F8, you can see all the cells, cancer cells treated by this bacteria overexpress this uh, tumor associated antigen. SAMFC demonstrated excellent tumor treatment in both CT26 and MC38 tumor bearing mice. Importantly, the rechallenge study revealed that the successful tumor rejection in most of the animals, treated animals, when antecedent treatment was done by SAMFC. This is the evidence. This is the photos of 16 animals of rechallenge study. Out of them, 14 animals revealed tumor rejections, 
when uh, tumor was rechallenged in the uh, left side of the flank. Immunophenotyping studies revealed high M1 macrophages and low M2 macrophages and high mature DC, CD8 T cells and CD4 T cells and memory T cells in tumors treated by the same FC or same CR. SAM FC or SAM CLI A significantly decreased the immunosuppressive T lymphocytes such as Treg, And most of SAM series significantly decreased the don't eat me signal of the cancer cells uh, CT, CD47. And interestingly, most of the SAM series significantly increase the PD-1 in CD4 T cells and CD8 T cells. This result may indicate the bacterial treatment may increase the susceptibility of cancer cells to uh, immune checkpoint inhibitors. So this immunophenotyping study was verified in preclinical uh, models using mice bearing B16F10 melanoma, which is a representative cold cancers and immunosuppressive cancers. The combination of SAMFC with anti-PD-1 treatment significantly suppressed the tumor growth. The bacterial infection in tumor microenvironment can modulate anti-tumor immune response, making it attractive to combine live bacteria with immune checkpoint blocking. As you saw in my result, the animal models show the different response to bacterial therapy. Most of the animals show the very good therapeutic response, but some animals did not. Even SAM treatment failed in some mouse models. Let's see the SAM's interview. As successful as some immunotherapies have been, they are also not working in many people. So in the US at least, where I'm from, there's a lot of hype right now around immunotherapy. Every third commercial on television is about immunotherapy because in the US, pharmaceutical companies are allowed to directly market to consumers. So if you turn on the television, every third commercial is about a new immunotherapy for treating lung cancer, a new immunotherapy for treating breast cancer, for treating colorectal cancer. These eventually may work, but right now why they're limited is that for some reason, the immunotherapy fails. And I envision it to why exactly we need molecular imaging. Our war against bacteria against infections was very difficult before the microscope. We didn't have the tools to visualize bacteria. We had no idea whether a drug was working by killing a bacteria in bacterial culture under the microscope. These new molecular imaging tools are letting us look inside the body and thereby letting us see why an immunotherapy is failing. For example, today I showed an example of where CAR T cells were being damaged before they ever made it to the tumor site. We would never have discovered that without imaging. By having the imaging tools, we can connect the dots from A to Z as to why a therapy is working or not. And in the case of immunotherapy, hopefully by connecting all the dots, when we start to understand why the immunotherapy is failing, will be able to develop better immunotherapies to treat it or to improve it and to treat a person successfully. As Sam emphasized the importance of molecular imaging and immunotherapy, uh, I'm trying to develop immu imaging assays for Sam immunotherapy. First, I try to image the bacteria using photoacoustic imaging collaborating with Vasilis Ziakristos in uh, Munich, uh, we developed 
the uh, E. coli or salmonella type humurium expressing photoacoustic repolarizing, which is a tyrosinase. Tyrosinase is a key enzyme in the biosynthesis pathway of melanin. So after overexpressing tyrosinase, the bacterial color become very dark. We measured the photoacoustic intensity and compared with the positive control and black ink, you can see the, uh, the photoacoustic signals from E. coli expressing tyrosinase is almost similar to the, that of black ink. So we injected, intravenously injected uh, this E. coli expressing tyrosinase or not expressing tyrosinase into CT26 tumor bearing mice. You can see the strong photoacoustic signal was observed in the tumor uh, colonized by uh, E. coli expressing tyrosinase. And this was very uh, correlated with the uh, uh, melanin staining and E. coli staining. Okay, let me wrap up my talk. And tumor targeting bacteria are ideal live biotherapeutic product. And bacterial infection in tumor can modulate anti-tumor tumor immune response. So making it attractive to combine live bacteria with other systemic immunotherapeutic approaches such as the immune checkpoint blockade. And SAM can induce neoantigen expression in tumor microenvironment that can further induce anti-cancer memory. The approach of using tyrosinase expressing bacteria uh, enables non-invasive longitudinal monitoring of the bacteria targeting proliferation in tumor. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Min, for that wonderful talk, both about Sam and um, his mentorship and friendship, as well as on your inspiring science and your visionary um, dedication to um, to bacterial therapies. It's, it's definitely very inspiring. Um, we're going to hold questions until after Dr. Kang's talk next, and she's going to be telling us more about um, imaging of bacteria. So just to introduce um, Dr. Kang quickly, um, she is a clinical assistant professor in the Department of Nuclear Medicine at Chonam National University um, Poisson Hospital. Um, she received her bachelor's MD in uh, 2008 and her PhD in 2020. Um, she has received an, a number of awards, including the Young Investigator Award from the Korean Society of Nuclear Medicine in 2012 and the best article in from the Korean Society of Nuclear Medicine in 2021. Um, so we're very honored to, to have you here also to talk with us about um, imaging, molecular imaging and its role in uh, bacterial therapies. Um, so Dr. Kang, uh, please go ahead and share your screen and your work with us. Thank you for your kind introduction, Dr. Ferrara. Um, I really appreciate WMIS and MIPS members and Dr. John giving me the valuable opportunity to talk on SAM and BR early, early professional forum. And thanks everyone for being here today. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about the PET imaging for bacteria-based cancer therapy. This is disclosure statements. Over the past decades, phase one or two human clinical trials with bacteria-based cancer therapy have been tried in patients with advanced or refractory solid tumors using engineered tumor targeting bacteria, especially gram-negative salmonella, gram-positive listeria, and gram-positive clostridium. Um, most trials showed that the BCT is tolerable, but <clears throat> has not proven uh, therapeutic efficacy. 
in trials, the accumulation and proliferation of bacteria in the tumor was usually evaluated by <clears throat> clinical inflammatory signs such as pain, redness, heat, and swelling at the tumor sites. And the accumulation of bacteria in the unintended normal tissues resulting in side effects was assessed by fever, systemic infection signs, blood culture, or sampling. These traditional evaluation methods of bacteria colonization would have contributed to the failures of clinical trials. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> so non-invasive and quantitative imaging for tumor treating bacteria is necessary for the success of clinical translation of BCT. Confirming the bacterial localization and proliferation in the tumor is mandatory for predicting and evaluating the therapeutic effect of, of the bacteria. And monitoring the bacterial colonization in other organs is needed to predict possible adverse events. And detection of obscure tumors and metastasis might be additional benefits of BCT imaging. The imaging modalities commonly used for bacterial imaging include optical imaging, photoacoustic imaging, ultrasound, MRI, and radionuclide imaging. All imaging modalities have its own advantages and disadvantages, but for clinical translation, PET might be strong candidates for overcoming the limitation of optical and anatomical imaging because they show high sensitivity and unlimited depth of penetration. PET imaging for BCT has been developed primarily using reporter genes. Melanoma bearing mice were treated with salmonella expressing herpes simplex thymidine kinase reporter genes. HSV TK were incorporated into salmonella and detected by nucleoside analog FIAU PET in melanoma bearing mice. But there are some limitations of reporter gene imaging. Ex vivo genetic transformation of bacteria is needed in this strategy. It can change the bacterial characteristics and cause unwanted biological effects. And the possibility of horizontal gene transfer should not be neglected when using genetically modified live bacteria that carry inserted genes or mobile genetic elements. Moreover, expression of reporter genes can decrease over time, resulting in a less intense signal in the imaging. Recently, bacteria-specific PET tracers are actively investigated for infection imaging. In the next slide, let me show a table providing bacteria-specific PET tracers available in tumor-treating bacteria. Tracers can be divided into several categories according to the molecular targets. First category, is labeling pre-existing antimicrobial agents, including antibiotics and antimicrobial peptides. But antimicrobial-based tracers showed poor accuracy despite long-term initial research. Second group is targeting specific metabolic pathways that exist in bacterial cells, but not in mammalian cells sugar, sugar alcohol, folate, and amino acid metab metabolism are the main targets. Third one is targeting just the bacteria surface. For example, using affinity for anionic bacterial cell membranes. As you can see, most tracers target broad spectrum bacteria. So we focused on the fluorodeoxysorbital because it is specific to the gram-negative enterobacterial family such as Salmonella and E. coli. Sorbital is a sugar alcohol. 
It is well-known metabolic substrate of Enterobacteria C family. Bacterial cells have sorbitol transporter, but mammalian cells do not have them. Fluorinating FDS is trapped in intracellular area as fluorinating FDS 6 phosphate. One of the great advantage of fluorinating fluorodeoxysorbital is that it can be synthesized in about 30 minutes by adding sodium borohydride to fluorinating FDG. In in vitro studies, FDS accumulated not in the gram-positive bacteria, but in the gram-negative enterobacteria family, such as E. coli, Klebsiella, and Salmonella. In vivo PET imaging showed high FDS uptake in the infection site, not in the sterile inflammation site, but FDG cannot distinguish infection from inflammation. Because in our lab, we have explored enterobacteria C for using bacterial cancer therapy for more than a decade, we evaluated the use of FDS PET for the visualization of tumor colonization and proliferation of tumor targeting E. coli in mouse tumor models. Tumor FDS uptake was significantly higher in one, three, and five days post-inoculation images than in pretreatment images. Because heat killed E. coli or gram-positive SREUs revealed no tumor tropism, these control bacteria were intratumorally injected into subcutaneous tumors, and micropet imaging showed nearly background uptake in tumors injected with bacteria. We found a very strong correlation between SUV max and the number of viable bacteria in tumors. The correlation between SUV max and tumor size was also high, but it did not reach statistical significance. To further assess the feasibility of using FDS PET as a whole body tomographic imaging for monitoring BCT, we generated orthotopic colon cancer mice with CT26 murine colon cancer cells, stably expressing firefly luciferase, and treated them with engineered E. coli expressing anti-cancer toxin cytolysin A. FDS specifically accumulated in orthotopic colon tumors in E. coli cliate-treated mice but not in the PBS-treated control mice. FDS uptake semi-quantitatively reflected the number of bacteria in a tumor. Tumoral bioluminescence activity in the E. coli cliate-treated mice tended to increase more slowly than that in controls, although the difference was not statist statistically significant. In vivo bioluminescence imaging often fail to visualize bacterial accumulation on one day post-inoculation imaging when the number of bacteria was still small. But FDS PET visualized bacterial colonization from one day post-inoculation imaging. Moreover, the signal of bioluminescent E. coli in living mice did not correlate with the number of viable bacteria grown in LB medium. In most tumor, in most tumor cross sections, the radioactivity and bioluminescence signals showed similar patterns. To wrap up the first uh, part, FDS PES should have translational power overcoming the limitation of optical imaging for visualizing and monitoring bacterial cancer therapy. FDS PET showed the distribution of the tumor targeting bacteria, even in the deep portion of tumors, and provided semi-quantitative data 
um, bacterial location without sacrificing the mice. The bacterial density required to achieve a therapeutic effect does not always correlate with the administered dose because of differences in bacterial proliferation rates in the target tissue. Imaging-based monitoring of the bacterial proliferation could permit non-invasive and repetitive assessment of whether or not an effective bacterial density has been reached in a tumor. As BCT studies predominantly employ uh, gram-negative enterobacteriaceae such as Salmonella and E. coli, FDS, which selectively accumulated in enterobacteriaceae but not in mammalian or cancer cells, could be widely used as a tracer in BCT studies. Then intriguingly, we learned that sorbitol can act as a sole carbon source supporting high fungal growth and sporulation. So we wanted to know that the, that the indication of FDS PET could be extended to fungal imaging in various mouse models. Among the fungi, uh, Aspergillus fumigatus is the most common cause invasive fungal disease. It usually affects the lung, sinuses, and brain. Invasive aspergillosis is well-known complication in immunocompromised patients, but the incidence of invasive aspergillosis has also increased in non-neutropenic patients with underlying COPD, asthma, lung cancer, and COVID-19. Fluorinating FDS uptake by A. fumigators Rhizopus arisus and Candida albicans was comparable to its uptake by E. coli, but heat killed pathogens and the gram positive bacterium did not accumulate the probe. In the in vivo imaging, the infected muscle was clearly visualized by FDS PET with its activity retained for two hours and the activity showed good correlation with CFU. FDS readily concentrated in the aspergillus infected shoulders, but not in the shoulders with sterile inflammation, CT26 tumor, and S. aureus infection. The reference imaging FDG PET showed that FDG accumulated not only in aspergillus infected shoulders, but also in sterile infl inflamed tumor engrafted and asorius infected shoulders. FDS PET could also distinguish invasive pulmonary aspergillosis from asorius infected lung and LPS induced lung inflammation showing negligible uptake of FDS. Central nervous system is one of the most common sites of aspergillus infection in immunocompromised hosts. FDS localized to the site of aspergillus brain infection without signal in normal brains. By contrast, FDG signal intensities did not differ significantly in infected and normal brains. FDS PET imaging was performed in mice with A. fumigatus infected myositis before and after treatment with voriconazole or fluconazole. Voriconazole is a drug of choice for the treatment and fluconazole is a negative control. FDS signal disappeared after treatment with voriconazole, but not after administration of fluconazole. FDS signal corresponded to aspergillus CFU. Early determination of treatment efficacy by FDS PET would be helpful in the management of infected patients. 
to sum up the selective concentration and prolonged retention of FDS in AFMIGATIS infection with low background activity suggests that this radio tracer could be used as a novel PET imaging agent to obtain high image quality in the diagnosis of AFMIGATIS infection. FDS could distinguish AFMIGATIS infection from non-infectious etiology and other infectious agents such as S. aureus and P. aeruginosa that are a common cause of pulmonary infiltrates in immunocompromised patients. I thank all of EMIT lab members and my mentor, John Min. I greatly appreciated your attention and your time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that wonderful presentation. That was great to hear about your, um, your progress in pet imaging. Um, and we do have some questions here. Um, our first question is whether or not, what's your feeling about ImmunoPet and whether it will become a workhorse or a broadly used um, technique in nuclear medicine over the next 10 years? Uh, I, I think the immunopath would be the, has a, a bright future. Uh, if we can image the uh, therapeutic drugs, as well as some of the interacting uh, molecules or immune cells, that will be the big discovery uh, for unveiling the, uh, the immune reaction in living subject. So in addition to besides the, uh, the bacterial imaging, in the bacterial mediated immunotherapy, the bacterial imaging plus some uh, immunopath imaging, visualizing uh, immune cells or some other uh, molecules involved in the immune reaction would be the great. Thank you. Anything to add, Dr. King? So oh, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, so next question. Thanks so much for the wonderful talk. Bacteria-based treatment is an exciting immunotherapy. However, safety issues may be a huge concern. Um, the, so um, this um, this um, participant is asking whether or not we could use this, we could get the same effect by using dead bacteria or outer membrane vesicles to achieve an anti-tumor effect. Uh, yes, the interesting questions and the, the live bacteria as well as bacterial derivatives such as the uh, outer membrane vesicles or bacterial mini cells uh, explored for cancer therapy. Uh, the one advantage is of live bacteria, bacteria itself has a natural tropism for uh, cancer tissue. So the live bacteria has uh, some benefit in terms of the targeting tropism, but the live bacteria has some uh, the concerns about the safety issue. So uh, we are trying to uh, attenuate the strains for human use, but some uh, researches, investigations uh, reported that attenuation, much attenuated strains lose the anti-cancer effect. Some toxic bacterial toxicity somewhat con contribute to the anti-cancer anti uh, effect. So there is a vice versa. But it is the, the most, the more important thing is how we can make the attenuated strain. If we, if we moderate the lipopolysaccharide, the bacteria can lose the tropism or anti-cancer effect. But 
if we attenuate the strains in other ways, uh, we can uh, protect the losing from the losing uh, anti-cancer effects. So th that needs a more uh, deeper uh, investigation. But anyway, the bacterial derivatives such as uh, uh, outer membrane vesicles and mini cells are also promising uh, tools when it is combined with uh, uh, nano uh, medicine technology. There's a follow-up question on whether or not you can control the biodistribution and clearance of the vesicles um, or vehicles um, if you were to use attenuated bacteria or vesicles. Oh, so the question is the change the clearance from the normal tissue? Sure, or distribution oh. into the okay. tissue. Okay, so our strategy was like this. Uh, the, in case of the Salmonella, Salmonella has uh, uh, some gene clusters related to the virulence. Uh, Salmonella pathogenesis island, SPI, one is for the uh, bacterial invasion in the host cells, and Salmonella pathogenesis island two is needed to survive in the, when they are phagocytosed by the macrophages. So our strategy is to, if we remove and delete, completely remove the SPI1 and the SPI2, these kind of bacteria are very vulnerable to the macrophages. When they phagocytosed by the macrophages in the liver or spleen, they are easily dying. So when we want to clear the bacteria from reticular endothelial systems and we can delete the SPI1 and the SPI2, that is the, uh, some approach to uh, the facilitate the uh, clearance of the bacteria in the body. Thank you. Uh, there's also a question about combining PDT or PTT with um, your methods. Um, do you have thoughts on that? Yeah, there is a many uh, studies to engineer the bacteria for the purpose of the photothermal uh, therapy or photodynamic therapy uh, because the uh, bacteria can increase the reticular, the increase the uh, reactive oxygen species in the tumor. So that can be applied with the, uh, some surface engineering or some with the, some nanotechnology. The bacteria can be uh, combined with the uh, PTT or PDT. Actually, these studies are very popular in the Chinese, Chinese group. Uh, uh, in uh, recent years. Thank you so much. There's um, also, Dr. Kang, there's a question for you um, asking more about the differences that you see between F18 FDS imaging for bacterial therapy and um, FTG imaging. Uh, the question is the difference between FDS and FDG PET. Yeah, what differences do you see in the images when you're doing bacterial imaging? Um, in, as you can see in my presentation, FDG cannot distinguish uh, infection site, inflammation site, sterile inflammation site, and tumor site. Uh, but FDS PET can uh, specifically uh, show high uptake in infection site uh, with low uptake in the sterile inflammation and tumor sites. So for bacteria specific imaging, uh, FDS PET superior to FDG PET. Thank you so much. I have another question. I'm, 
Um, could you comment, um, either of you comment on um, the um, work that's under uh, going on in in bladder cancer with um, direct delivery of bacillus um, in the context of immunotherapy and whether or not you think imaging could play a role in those therapies as well? So you mean the use of the mycobacterium bovis in bladder cancer, right? Yes. Correct. Yeah, that is the one, the procedures in recent uh, clinical field, it is used in the superficial uh, bladder cancer. Uh, still, still it is, it is you being used. Actually, the bacterial cancer therapy has a long history. The bacteria has been used in late 19th century uh, in uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. That the name was a New York Cancer Hospital at that time. And Dr. William Corley uh, treated uh, several thousands cases using the Streptococcus pyogen uh, live bacteria. And later he discovered the uh, uh, colis toxin, the heat, heated the, the uh, streptococcus pyogen and serratia marcins, the cocktail uh, heated bacteria. And that has the uh, long history. And the one The clinical practice still used is the uh, tuberculosis, the mycobacterium bovis in the bladder cancer. And now there is a strikingly increasing number of the clinical trials in United States and European countries. And we are also preparing the clinical trials using uh, salmonella typhimurium. And some clinical trials were done, being done with the clostridium or listeria or salmonella typhimuria. Thank you. Maybe one last question um, from Jason Lee about um, whether or not you're seeing a slightly increased systemic background in FTS imaging after antifungal therapy. Do you see an increase in the systemic signal? So I, I think it is a, a, a pneumonia model, the aspergillosis, invasive uh, pulmonary aspergillosis. In, in, the, in that animals, uh, the animal conditions are the pretty weak and that might be due to the increase the increase the blood pooling effect. So uh, yeah, we found these increased backgrounds only in the animals uh, with the invasive pulmonary aspergillosis when the animals conditions are so bad. I see. Well, thank you so much. I want to, um, we, we are out of time. I wanted to um, go ahead and bring the webinar to a close. We will be moving into the um, social lounge, so please, um, if you're um, watching this webinar in real time, please join us there. And I'd like to th thank both Dr. Min and Dr. Kang for really wonderful presentations, um, sharing both their science and sharing their experiences and, um, and uh, their relationship um, with Sam Gambier with us. So. Thank you all so much and thanks to everyone uh, who joined our webinar as well. So thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you all so much. Uh, we are no longer live, so you can go on to the chat room. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Kang, I'm going to have to run off pretty quickly. Um, I'll try to join you in the chat room for a few minutes, but um, but I'm going to have to run off to another meeting. So, but it was great to meet you and great presentation. So, yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much.
All right, I'm going to end this meeting. Thank you both. Thank you.